Hey, we're King Gizzard and a Lizard Wizard, and you're watching Nardwa's Video Vault! <laughs> Who are you? I'm Stu from King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Stu, welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, Stanley Park! Woo, yeah. Stu, who else is in King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard? Well, we got Michael. Hello. Lucas. Hey. Big Cookie Doggy. Hello. Joey. Hello. Eric. Hello. Amby. G'day. And together you are? King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Stu, right beside you, you have... Ambrose. Ambrose! <laughs> hey, yo. Now, you, Ambrose, almost got the Sonic's autograph? Yeah, uh, I guess we almost... <laughs> we played with him and... That was crazy and cool. Um, yeah, we played in Melbourne once and it was like a festival and they were the headline. And I definitely tried, but I was very intimidated and young and didn't. So you did not get the Sonic's autograph? We ran into him again at Desert Days recently, but um, yeah, it just wasn't the right moment yet. Well, I have a gift for you, Ambrose, right here. An original Sonic's signed poster from 1965 in Nanaimo, British Columbia, Canada. Whoa. Signed by all the Sonics. That's, so That's really cool. Thanks. Really Thanks, sir. You were into Garage, the Sonics. That is like holy for you. Yeah. The Count Five, please explain. The Count Five, yeah. We used in um, my other band, the Murlocs, we used to cover the psychotic reaction. And yeah, all this stuff is the roots of all what we do. It's great. Thanks a lot. You covered some nuggets, didn't you? Um, yeah. We did. We've probably covered a few, actually. Well, I thought I'd reintroduce you to a song that you have covered before, because I saw you cover it, The Seeds oh. Pushing Too Hard. We did do this. We did. An original Seeds record. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you, Nadwa. Could you, uh, no problem. Could you please explain King Gizzard and The Seeds? Um, we covered this, I want to say once, but maybe more than once. We jammed with the Babe Rainbow, who were buddies of ours in Perth at the Mojo's bar on this. That's the only time I remember doing it. We may have done it another time. I think we did it. I think we did it at uni, like in a uni band once. Yeah, we might have done it. We might have done that too. Do you forget the songs you do? All the time, but this is cool because it's two chords, so you can't forget it. And also I was curious, Air Rick. Air Rick. Of King Gizzard. And a lizard. Wizard. No, you are into garage rock too, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I just love how primitive and raw it is. It's kind of, uh, I guess we all started listening to Nuggets and everything. It's how we started Gizzard. It's just so easy to play. It makes you want to like pick up an instrument and have a bash and start a band. It's rock and roll. And I thought I would give you something even better than Nuggets or Pebbles. Back from the Grave, Volume 10. Sick. I've got Volume 1 and 2, so Volume 10 sick. And there's Volume 10, an actual gatefold as well. It's very nice, very nice product. It feels... Back from the Grave is amazing. Yeah, I love the, the Back from the Grave comps. It's really cool. What can you say about Eric? Eric. Um, I would say that Eric's the boss, and that defines him. <laughs> Cheers. That's good. But really, what can you say about Eric? Yeah, he's a good cook as of recently. He can make some mean brown rice stir fry. That's about it. He's going to be some like head of like an evil corporation at some point in his life. <laughs> but if, <laughs> yeah, but really Eric, you are very coordinated, aren't you? What is going on in this photo right here? Could you explain lawn tennis? This, guy. Um, this was actually <laughs> this was a few weeks ago. That's so funny. I went. I was my dad H. We, um, me and Cavs are from a small town called Daniloquin, about 8,000 people. And I went home for Easter and played in a tennis tournament with my, my old man. And yeah, we won the B grade, so there you go. And he's the president of the Lawn Tennis Club? Yeah, in Daniloquin, yeah, yeah, he's, he's the president. So everyone was saying it was rigged, but uh, we, we won fair and square, so. And you are Cookie Dog. 60. 
Nine. 69. And I have a gift for you, Cookie Dog, right here. An original Standell, speaking of Garage Rock, LP Live from 1966. I didn't even know there was live recordings of them. And right behind you, Stu, you have... Michael. Hello, Michael. Hello. The Pioneer Tourist Park. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was my, yeah, I, our family owned a caravan park back in our little hometown where me and Eric are from. The Pioneer Tourist Park. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have a gift for you right here, a Buddy Rich original LP from 1959. You know me too well. It's very cool. Very sweet. And speaking of records, Stu, you have put out a lot of records, haven't you? We've put out a few, yeah. And I would like to present you with their most recent LP, or one of the most recent LPs, put out by Neptune Records. They put out your record. Yeah, see, I get nerdy about these I, I, Actually, Eric, do you want to pull open the record? Look at the vinyl on this record. Because, you know, does, is Eric good at quality control? Eric, yeah. <laughs> this wasn't pressed by Flightless, so it's probably not that good, but we'll see. Oh. It's the Neptune pressing, and check out the other side of the vinyl. Yeah, that's very nice. Could you please explain, like, here is a Vancouver label, Neptune Records, releasing your record. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Uh, and you don't even know about it. This is the first time you've seen it. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it on the internet, but I haven't seen it in the flesh, so it's nice. So, Neptune released your record in Vancouver. That's amazing. It's cool. Yeah. And you don't even know it, really. No, 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 no. Didn't know it happened. But it didn't stop there. Kingfisher Blues also released your record with alternative album art. Now, this one, this one I have seen online. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. Check out the vinyl of that one. Okay. And could you talk about the album art? Because that's alternative album art, isn't it? Yeah, that's that's really interesting. It's um. It's by Eden Cook. She did some alternative album art regarding your lore. That was that allowed? That wasn't allowed, was it? Uh, I think you could just do whatever you like. That was the idea. We didn't know what was going to happen, so yeah, I think it's cool when people make their own art. That was part of it. And that's Kingfisher Blues from Vancouver releasing your record. Masters of the Gizverse, apparently. Check it out. And I looked on Discogs, and there are like 180 versions of your record. That's incredible, yeah. That's wild. Have you got every copy of the record? I know, Jace, who does all our artwork and stuff, is actually out the back. He's a bit scared to come on camera, but um, he's trying to collect them all. He's got about 15 so far. So I think he's got the most. And people have been really creative. Like, there are 8-tracks and reel-to-reels as well. Yeah, it's been kind of cool to watch, I don't know, some weird stuff happen. Because you are Lucas of King Gizzard and a Lizard Wizard, quote, easy listening adult contemporary mumble? What was it? Oh, mumble. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a, yeah, a solo thing I did a while ago. Quote, easy listening adult contemporary mumble. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I'm all about. I, mu I mumble. Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, I don't know. I'm forgotten what uh, what the intention was <laughs> well i have a gift for you right here a moog record oh, the yeah. first music for easy listening ever recorded on the moog and that is for you right there because you're into quote easy listening adult contemporary mumble that's incredible thank you rough river oh yeah that's <laughs> that's my sister the atoll oh yeah that's my old band periscopes <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't in the Periscope, so that was our friend's band, uh, the, the Heart Nets. With King Gizzard, are you allowed to have other bands? <laughs> <laughs> there are the Murlocs. How does that work? Uh, was, yeah, there's never a contract, so oh, I think well, it's, it's unwritten it's agreement. Yeah. yeah, he's supposedly our manager. And you are Joe Walker of King Gizzard and the Lizard Wiz. What's the importance of War Rumpy Band? Oh. Uh, they're a, a band from um, the northern part of Australia, um, who where I grew up and was born, and they're um, yeah they were a pretty big influence on me I guess getting into music. The Stomping Ground Fest of 1993. Yeah, yeah, it's one of my earliest memories. I was supposedly supposedly was on TV, and I was about two years old. And now you're in King. Is it? And a lizard. Was it? And now you're into yes. I have an actual program guide from Yes for you. Oh, An original geez. program guide. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's crazy. You're into Yes. Yeah. So you went from War Rumpy Band to Yes. How did that happen? Uh, I don't know. I guess I uh, listened to Tool as a 13-year-old boy and then... <laughs> 
went backwards. That's pretty much it. <laughs> And here we are in Stanley Park, British Columbia, Canada. How would you describe, basically, all the different members of King Gizzard and a Lizard Wizard, the way they look? Uh, each of them separately? Yes. The way they look. Uh, from your left. Oh, man, I'm going to get beat up for this later. Uh, I don't, uh, Joe's been referred to Gosling, a bit of Ryan Gosling sometimes, but... I don't know, these days he's more of a Channing Tatum for me or something. <laughs> Eric uh, gets a bit of uh, Bobby Gilles- Gillespie. Mm, I'm screaming. Yeah, but he's a bit... He needs to maybe work on this, shave that off and he'll look a bit more. Cookie, lately, more of a lumberjack, sailor man look he's going for. Yeah, he's got a, got a nice dome on him. Uh, Lucas, Lucas is just, you know, just kind of typical handsome looking, looking man. He can grow a mean beard. Uh, Cavs is just... You know, those curls do wonders for me. It's really gorgeous. Uh, and then we have Stu. No, I'm <laughs> no Stu's, uh, yeah, like you said, can be possessed at times, but he's got a good heart. And, yeah. uh, I, I, and Stu, what about Ambrose? What about Ambrose? He's, he's beautiful. Look at him. He's gorgeous. He's absolutely stunning. Why should people care about King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard? People can care if they want to care if they don't. That's cool as well. It's their choice, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know. They shouldn't care. <laughs> great role models. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, King Gizzard and the Lizard. Wizard. Keep on rocking in the free world and do do loot do. Do 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 do. The kids are here. People watching.